Hello everyone, my name is Jamin. Thanks so much for visiting my channel. In this video, I have an ASUS ROG Flow X13. This is going to apply to the GV301 series computers. I'm going to take you on a teardown or disassembly tour, show you how to get into the computer and the various components you can access once you're inside. So first thing, power down your computer the correct way, make sure it's off and unplug from your charger. We're then going to flip the computer over to access our bottom case screws. Now you have 11 screws throughout the entire bottom case. After you get those screws out, you're going to take a small, flat, plastic pry tool. I say plastic because it'll scratch your case a lot less than metal will. We usually use a hard guitar pick like you would find in any computer repair kit. And we're going to go around the seam of the bottom case and pry it up from the rest of your computer. Don't put the pry tool too far in. You could damage some internal components. Keep it on the edge. Go firm but slow and careful. And if you get stuck somewhere, go to the other corner and work your way in the other direction. Once you get your bottom case off, this is what you're looking at for the inside of your computer. Now as a general computer repair side note, whenever I'm working on a laptop in my shop, it's sitting on an anti-static mat. Either that or an anti-static bracelet are great ideas to avoid damaging things in your computer when you're working on it. If you would like any help with tools or supplies for your computer project, there'll be a link below in the description. It'll be a list of all the tools and supplies that I recommend for my viewers. Right under that link, I'll have another list. It'll be all the replacement and upgrade parts for this specific model computer if you need those. So here's your battery right down here near the bottom. This battery has a part number of C41N2009. It's a 62 watt hour battery, 15.48 volts. I'll have all that information below in the description if you need it to search for your own replacement. But again, I will have a replacement option for this battery in that list I told you about with all the replacement and upgrade parts for this model computer. There are seven screws to remove the battery and then the battery plugs in right here. Now this isn't a plug, this is more of a snap, it snaps on top. So that white plug right there, you just snap that directly up and off of the motherboard and that's how you would unplug your battery from the motherboard. And I guess the last thing to shout out about this kind of procedure, if you're here because your laptop is not turning on, it could be due to a bad battery in which case it would need to be replaced, but a laptop should still turn on and work with a bad battery if your charger is plugged in. So if your computer's not turning on, there may be another issue besides just a bad battery. If you would like help troubleshooting why your laptop is not turning on, there will be a video link below in the description. It'll be a tutorial on how to troubleshoot a dead laptop so you can find the actual cause. Okay, so now that the battery has been removed or at least unplugged, it's safer to proceed deeper into the computer. Uh, your solid state drive is right here to the right hand side of my screen. This computer only has a single M.2 port. Uh, NVMe solid state drives can only fit the 2230s, this small size right here, 2230. It doesn't have the ability to fit a longer 2280 solid state drive. So unfortunately, this is all you can put in it. I'm pretty sure you guys, most of you will have a 512 gigabyte solid state drive in here stock. Uh, so below in the description, in that link I told you about with all the replacement and upgrade parts, I will have a 512 gigabyte drive if you're looking to simply replace one that went bad. And I will also try to have a one terabyte drive the same size if you're looking to upgrade. As a side note, if your old drive did go bad, it is possible that any data on it can still be recovered, but you kind of have to send it out to a data recovery service. That's not something most of us can do ourselves. Uh, so if you wanted any information on the service that I use, it'll be below in the description. To operate this drive, it's very easy. There's a single screw right there on the right. You take that screw out. You can then pull this drive out of that port. And then to put it back in, you slide it in, make sure it's flush and even, hold it down and put that screw back in. That's how you operate that solid state drive. And as far as the RAM, many of you will have already noticed there is no removable RAM in this computer. Uh, it has onboard RAM only. So the only way to increase your RAM is to get a motherboard with a larger onboard RAM value. And I believe that this model maxes out at 32 gigabytes of RAM. So if you already have 32 gigabytes, that's 
the max RAM that's offered. If you have lower than that and you really want to increase your RAM, you would have to replace this motherboard to the 32 gigabyte motherboard. So not my favorite computer, not very versatile, not very upgradable. And I guess the last thing to shout out about this operation, if you are replacing a drive, um, you probably need to install an operating system to the new one. So I will have two more video links below in the description. One will show you how to install Windows 10. The other will show you how to install Windows 11 if you need help with that. You have one speaker here on the left side of my screen and one speaker here on the right side of my screen. The left side speaker has the red and black wire that's run down here underneath your ribbon cables for your touchpad and keyboard all the way to the right. And the right hand speaker has a blue and white wire that come up here. They join up with the left speaker and they plug into the motherboard right here underneath your solid state drive. Now, as usual, try not to pull on the wires or cables in a computer. You can damage them or even pull them right out of the plug. If at all possible, just manipulate that plug. And this one has grips on either side, so you should be able to easily remove it with your fingernails or a pry tool, wiggle that right out of that plug. The speakers for this computer were kind of hard to find when I looked for them, but I will try to have a replacement speaker option below in the description in that link I told you about with all the replacement and upgrade parts for this computer. And I guess the last shout out that I can make about a speaker replacement like this, if you're having sound quality issues in your computer, the sound is not consistent across different software, um, it's going in and out. If you're having issues like that, try fully updating your drivers and your system first. Your speakers could be okay. It could be a driver or a system issue. So I will have a link below in the description showing you how to do that, how to update your system update all of your drivers, uh, do that first, rule that out before opening up your computer and, and trying an invasive repair like this. Your fan and your heat sink assembly are up top. You see this fan on the left side of my screen, this large heat sink that goes between these two vents and the fan goes over your CPU, GPU area, all the way to this vent and this fan. So this area here is what we're gonna look at accessing. Also, if you are looking for fan replacements, I will try to have an option for fan replacements in that link in the description I told you about with all the replacement and upgrade parts for this computer. One thing to note, do you see this screw right here? That's a warranty void sticker. You're gonna see these in various computers at different points in the computer, sometimes right at your bottom case, sometimes at different points inside. If you disturb this sticker, that will void part or all of your warranty, depending on your computer. So just keep that in mind in your computer projects when you see stickers like this. To access your fans, you would remove the screws assigned to the fans, and you would unplug them. This fan on the right plugs into the motherboard right here. This one on the left plugs into the motherboard down here. Now these wires are very, very fragile. Definitely do not pull on these wires. Try to manipulate the plug itself. Use your fingernails or a pry tool. Uh, wiggle that out of the motherboard there instead of pulling on the wire. That's how you would get your fans out. To access your heatsink assembly, uh, you have these four screws here and these four screws here. That would remove your heatsink assembly. Now, as another side note with any type of repair like this, whether you're here to just clean out your computer for overheating or whether you're replacing components, if for any reason you are getting into your heat sink and exposing your thermal paste to air, you will need to reapply it. Uh, once air gets into the thermal paste, it's not gonna act like it should. So you wanna clean all the old stuff off. You don't wanna put new paste on top of old paste. And then you don't wanna to apply too much thermal paste because if you apply too much, you can actually lock heat in rather than facilitate its transport out. I will have a video tutorial link below in the description. That video shows you how to fix an overheating computer, but in it, it'll show you how to correctly apply thermal paste if you guys need to reference that. Thanks again so much for watching. Uh, please remember to like and share if this helped you out, if you think it can help someone else out. And feel free to subscribe if you enjoy DIY computer content like this, or if you just want to keep me on hand to answer any of your future computer questions, I do try to answer all questions throughout my channel at least a couple times a day. Also, feel free to check out the related link section below in the description. From time to time, I do try to add things in there that I think will help you 
uh, with your general computer life, make it more productive, more enjoyable. So thanks again for watching, everyone. I look forward to seeing you on my next video.